what I like to think of as the old meta um, deck choice here, going for four tier one units and two tier twos, uh, usually favoring a kind of early early game aggression style push where you'd like to end it faster. And the gentleman uh, considering the squizzards, but instead going for three tier twos. I like. I don't think I've seen someone take three tier twos in a while. As we hop into this first game, the gentleman spawning in the south, his opponent in the upper right, Papa John. Uh, I guess we'll just call him the Groose, because I believe that's who they're supposed to be. That is indeed him. All right, cool, confirmed. So quick campfire audit. Uh, both players, they just get their own little campfire. So they're going to be hopefully roasting some s'mores by their base in safety in this game and get a nice little economic advantage. Some nice balanced campfire spawns. Yeah, sex. sometimes we see those campfires uh, on one side of the map. Or both of them on the same side of the map. But now, yeah, it is nice that it's right there next to them in case they want to have that extra option. I'm good to. See, I'm glad to see uh, the gentleman pick up those ferrets again. He seems to be a big fan of him. The gentleman here picking up three tier twos. I hope we. I hope we see all of them. I hope the gentleman takes on some serious, some serious micro potential by building all three of these tier two units. All three, each each one of them needing to be microed very differently than the other. And so, we'll see if he decides to take on that that burden or not, or if he's just kind of taking them as a sort of let's see what you're going to do, and I will respond with the most appropriate tier two unit. Yeah, it used to be just a few patches ago, or a patch ago, that it was the tier ones that were in, that were doing that. Like, nah, I got to see what their tier ones are. I got to match that or do something. But now it seems like we're moving into a more tier two. But I don't want to say that. It seems like we still have a little bit of the tier one side of that, but also we're finally getting into that tier two side, which is awesome. It's very healthy. I think it's great. I mean, even yeah, I think you were just saying this. Like even before the patch. I was starting to see a lot more of that, like just pickle warrens followed by an early tier two, and it was not that easy to punish. And so I was glad to see it as well. I mean, that's tier two is kind of like my wheelhouse. That's where I like to play the game. Uh, tier one's fun, but it, it kind of gets boring just to try to win everything off the back of these these boring little little units. Tier two has a lot more interest going on. So Papa John the Groose here is throwing down some moles for a little mole lizard push here early in the game. Uh, just Just a single mole, even though he has money for a few more. We'll see if and how he decides to, to do that. Um, kind of some weird timing, this mole in the back, but it's it's enough to make a difference. He's going to get that campfire for free, and he's just going to start to pull back and decide to re-engage. He's going to play the little bouncy bouncy lizard game. So overall, a good little good little push from from the Groose. I guess he just caught the gentleman off guard uh, as he threw down that chameleon warren, and he wasn't producing squirrels quite as quickly as he could have because his food was not available. Yeah, that's very interesting that we haven't seen that already. The lizard uh, mole timing push instead of squirrels because lizards and moles together are so tanky. And if you don't have anything to do burst damage, such as toad, your squirrels are not really going to do anything against the onslaught of tanky units. So, De yeah, I feel yeah, like... Yeah, definitely for the sake of taking out that campfire, it worked out really well. Because oh, yeah. those pigs weren't able to lay down their, their damage. Like, usually it's harder to attack into pigs these days with lizards. Uh, because of their lower range, but when you're just taking out a campfire, uh, that meat on a stick can't shoot back. Or even just attacking out in the open. Uh, lizards right. are still great in that aspect. They are still swift, so uh, the Groose deciding to go for an expansion and throwing down two Falcon Warrens. Um, we'll see how that pans out, because we've kind of got the, the, the beefy parts of these two players' armies are not going to be able to shoot each other. Or I guess the Falcons can shoot the Chameleons, but uh, the We'll at least see how these tech choices pan out because they're each moving up to four tier two units. Yeah, I'm worried that the gentleman doesn't really have an answer to the lizard, so that may end up being his downfall in these fights. Yeah, I think I think I'd like to see him maybe transition out with them, I guess, because he did take the the squirrels along with him, and we see a lot of players do that. Take these squirrels, uh, take these lizards rather, as an early hit and run sort of sort of squad to use to punish any kind of aggressive economic business coming out of your opponent. But he's deciding to keep him around and even build building a few more, going up to nine lizards. So he's going to see if he can make them work along with this uh, four mole army. So he's probably got to push out here soon. And he's going to do just that, just getting in here right before this sniper balloon gets up. Uh, these Falcons laying down some serious hurt on those chameleons. But man, they're just so tanky. And they're able to clear up most of the tier one business of uh, the gentleman. Luckily, the Groose did not lose his tier two units, which were the most important things in that fight. 
Uh, it's it's really humorous seeing not seeing the chameleons from the spectator point of view because I thought he was just gonna lose the fight immediately, but then those chameleons pop in and just start uh, tanking for for his for his back army. So those chameleons really pay for themselves well there, just being that tank that he needed. I was surprised. Yeah, I mean, with the, I was kind of thinking that. It wouldn't be a good choice because the Falcons have an obvious advantage that they can attack and not be attacked by chameleons. But man, that that extra health—it doesn't matter how much damage you can do if you've got infinite health. Uh, so the Groos here positioning for another attack, coming in, building two moles. Uh, economically, he's sitting in a pretty good mm. spot, up eight farms to four, in a, so effectively nine farms to five because they each have their one campfire. So we'll see as he throws down even more moles, a lot more moles. He's gonna go in for a push. I'm not sure I agree with these with this Falcon Warren placement. Like he almost should just get two more moles because it's not really worth waiting that much longer for those to get out. But we'll see what his plan is going to be. Uh, I understand the tech switch into all these Falcons because he's thinking, oh, he's going in for a attack. Oh, okay, he pulled it back. He tried to do a little uh, sneaky hit. I think he got one pig. But uh, yeah, I'm confused by this um, switch into mostly Falcons because I, if you don't have tier one units to back up your Falcons, you're just gonna get picked off by those tier ones. But I guess we'll see Falcons. here how it works out. They're still super squishy. One of those Falcons, he's he's engaging in a weird angle, uh, a good angle for his offense here. And as he's pushing in this big squirrel ball here from the gentleman is going to be enough to clean up everything. And so that was just a bit, it was a bit easy for the gentleman to tell what was happening. And he just, capitalized on it like it takes so long to get around that water the gentleman's like okay i see what you're doing it's going to take you five minutes to do that and uh, a couple of those falcons even running across those sniper balloons so it's like he built that warren for those new falcons but they just immediately flew into the sniper balloons anyways so just a, just it's kind of tough planning that's that's hard to do in a game like tooth and tail yeah as, uh, as i was saying um I, I understand the tech switch to the falcons because he saw the chameleons thinking okay if he's going to build so many chameleons, I'm just going to counter him with falcons. But um, as you said, falcons are so squishy that they really can't hold up on their own, especially against a large T1 army. And that's sort of what we saw there. The The initial moles got killed, all the T1 of the gentleman died, and then, or who, was it the gentleman that... Uh, the gentleman was, took that game, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, in the Papa John, all he had was his falcons left, and then... I mean, th that can't really work out against a whole bunch of Tier 1. Yeah, all right. In the north, we've got the gentleman spawning against his opponent in the south, Papa John. And I've got some tournament brain setting in AV. Is this a tied-up series right now, or was that the first game? Uh, that was the first game. The gentleman took it. <clears throat> okay. Yes. Yeah. So we are. So the gentleman is up 1-0 to zero in the series against the Groos is loose. I'm and sort so, of feeling that as well. <laughs> yeah, it happens. We get. I mean, we're not... We're, we're kind of relatively new. We're not like those uh, super experienced casters who can just do it for you know, nine hours on end. And so keeping things exciting for you guys means that we sometimes forget how to count to three. So that's, <laughs> that's happening here, and thanks for bearing with us. But in the meantime, uh, yeah, to recap here what needs to happen, the gentleman is, is in, right? I mean, he's qualified, and so he's definitely making it difficult for the Groose, as he should, because the Groose is kind of fighting for his possible tournament spot uh, whereas the gentleman's already in, so he's just he's fighting for pride here. It's funny to see now the uh, the Groose has dropped the moles. Um, I guess either he's not completely comfortable with it as are other mole players, but it seems like it's sort of phased out by this point. But I guess we'll we'll see by tournament end. As you said, like the meta for the tournament is developing, and as people sort of watch and understand when the moles are coming out and how to defeat them, people are going to start. Oh, and as I'm talking, I'm seeing a, a MG rush here. <laughs> We're seeing a turret push and and some farms. So this is kind of like one of those interesting flavors of like, hey, I'm moving in next door kind of thing where it's like he's not just trying to cheese you. He's like, this is my house now. And so he's going to, this is a contained strategy. So the Groose going for, for this farm and we'll see if it goes out well. The risk here for putting on farms is that, that those are less Warrens and MGs that you can put down. And it's not as easy as you think to just hold this position. And also, don't forget that uh, the gentleman can, if he wants to, just kind of move around to the south. Because uh, those MGs are not covering that area. Exactly. If if um, the gentleman knew that um, the Groose had no warrants, he most likely would have tried pushing south much earlier, kill his farms. But now, at this point, he needs to stay and defend his base. 
Oh, and Papa Last is minute. missing that eighth farm right now. So hopefully he goes back and builds that at some point. Oh man, and that's the one, like if you zoom in on that, especially for newer players, like always check your minimap guys to see if you've built all your farms because that's the easiest way to tell because your mill kind of cruelly uh, blocks that farm. So even even experienced players sometimes just in the heat of the moment kind of forget to check that out. And uh, here are those ferrets that you were hoping for, AV, doing exactly what you would hoped they would. Yeah, very smart play. Usually this is the excellent answer to ever being contained, is if you have, like, ferrets are the excellent contain breaker, because the guy's going to put up a whole bunch of turrets, going to be behind on warrens, so you just put up some ferrets, get those out, and then push out. Yeah, and so this is going to be pretty painful for the Groose here, because uh, he doesn't have a great answer. I mean, he's, he's doing okay uh, army-wise, and he's up in, e in economy by one farm, uh, but these ferrets, they're just so good at staying back and staying alive, because they are just healthily chopping down these warrens from the Groose, and pretty soon these are all the warrens that he has. Uh, the gentleman might be able to just make a strong push off the back of this and maybe even close out this game because uh, the Groose is deciding yeah, to wow. just tap out, and sure enough, that is exactly what happens. There's something wrong with the overlay or something? Uh, yeah, I, th <laughs> I think I forgot to um, switch it to the other one. <laughs> More of that uh, okay. tournament fatigue, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah I keep in mind, everybody, AV, yeah, AV Ultima here is casting alongside me and running the tournament and streaming the tournament and observing the games. And so, <laughs> so I've got the easy job here. I'm getting tired and I'm just talking. And so uh, <laughs> big, big shout out to the, the man in the chair next to me digitally. Uh, so that's going to be the end of that series. We're going to move into... The final series of the day, Mishi against Dutch Defender.